We've thought long and hard about the best way to present to you the vision of Revelation TV. Writing scripts, getting voiceovers, and narrators to produce an all bells and whistles presentation, but decided that none of that represented Revelation TV as we really are. So we went back to doing what we do best, being as down to earth and natural as possible. Let me introduce you to Howard Conder, the visionary and founder of Revelation TV, as he shares the history of the channel, its roots and the motivation behind its beginnings, and what we see for the future, God willing. Welcome, Howard. Hi. Why did you launch a Christian TV channel? I was working in America, having set up a music studio in Tampa, Florida in the 1980s, and my children were in school, my family settled, and outwardly everything looked great. But in my heart, God was doing something. And you know the way God works, doors open and other doors close. And suddenly you find yourself doing things you never expected. Without going into all the details, I found myself filming a promo video for Mercy Ships on board the Anastasis. We visited the Dominican Republic on the borders of Haiti and I can tell you, it was a life-changing experience for me and my family in many ways. I saw the power of God and I saw the power of television and the good it could do and I knew I could never go back to being a businessman ever again. God had began a work in me and when he calls there is no way that I was going to refuse him. You're a man that said, okay God, I'll be called to this land and then I'll be called to that region and then I'll be called to this region. And the Spirit of the Lord says, son, I have not limited you geographically. I've put a calling on your life to affect the world. So how would you believe that God called you to start Revelation TV? I wouldn't say so much that I was called, but challenged to get involved in Christian television. I was sitting alone one Sunday watching a religious program on the BBC and one of their token offerings to appease a small Christian audience. And remember, this was a time when there was no Christian TV channels in the UK, not even a Christian radio station. Uh, there were only four TV channels in existence at that time, BBC One, BBC Two, ITV and Channel Four. And the small amount of Christian programming that we did get was hardly inspiring, definitely not sufficient to change lives or bring souls into the Kingdom of God. So I found myself saying, who's going to get saved watching this rubbish? Well, to my utter amazement, a voice from nowhere said to me, what are you going to do about it? I found myself replying to this voice saying, it's nothing to do with me. I don't work in television. There's no reply, total silence. And there I was on my own with no one else in the apartment, having had a conversation with God only knows who. And I realized that I had opened my big mouth. You see, I had criticized the program with its inability to bring anyone to Christ. And I was doing this from the comfort of my own armchair. The gauntlet had been thrown down. <laughs> the challenge given, and within a matter of days, I found myself learning the foundations of broadcasting, and this was in the public broadcasting service studio in Tampa, Florida. The road to fulfilling this challenge, I believe, had just begun. And I heard the Spirit of the Lord say this, Howard, I have made you as a man who knows how to drop your net on the other side of the boat. You have an ability to gather people for the kingdom of God that others wouldn't even be able to touch. Paint a picture for us of those early days. I didn't know really what it was going to take to run a channel and so there was a lot of learning to do. God had me experience many different areas in the media and, and I was always learning mostly by my mistakes as one does and slowly working toward the fulfillment of the vision for a channel um, that was truly something that God wanted to bring about. I know that for sure. And I didn't know what form it was going to take. So even how to do it, or I, 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 all I wanted to do was pursue the vision. Did I ever miss God or did I ever doubt him, I think is more appropriate. Of course I did. <laughs> there were times when I was just about to give up, when things were really difficult, both financially and spiritually. And then just when I was on the verge of giving up, God would send someone to speak into my life. There's going to be television networks. There's going to be a great impact by media that's coming to the church in this nation. 
God saying, you let me work deep on the inside of you. You let me work strongly on the inside of you. And then I'm going to birth something fresh. What you have is not going to meet the needs. But what God is going to put into you is going to meet those needs out there. Television costs a lot of money. How did you raise the funds to start the channel? It's true, I had been challenged several times in my walk of faith by the words of Jesus, and particularly this scripture that says, sell all you have and come follow me. Now the only asset my wife and I had at this time was our home. So we remortgaged that and took all the equity out of it to start this TV channel. And believe me, if God had given me any other way, I would have taken it. As much as I would have welcomed funding from other sources, it just never seemed to materialize. It was almost as if God wanted me to trust in him only. And really the only person that ever supported me was my wife, Leslie, who with our family home at stake had more to lose than anyone. I won't cause you to be a man that can only touch people's heads and their intellect, but I'll cause you to be a man who has an ability even to touch other people's hearts, says God. Describe for us how hard it was in those early days. You know, I just had complete faith that God was in control. And if the channel didn't work, then I had at least been obedient and God's will had been done. And of course, God allowed it to go all the way to the last week or two before we began to see people get behind us and a check here, a direct debit there. And then we had enough money for just perhaps another week or a month. We never had a big investor or a multi-millionaire to get us started. It was just everyday people, those who saw the vision, who believed in what we were doing and began to give what they could. Now, after almost 12 years since the start of Revelation TV, we can see that God is in control and we are here by His grace and His will only. As Elijah went up on Mount Carmel and he purposed a challenge, a place of divine confrontation, the Spirit of the Lord says, Son, as I've called you to the media, I've called you with a like calling, says the Lord. Revelation TV, why that name? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> Well, I needed a name for a series of programs I was going to be producing for a secular television company in the UK. They were going to be based on the Bible, so I was asking the Lord for his thoughts as to what the name should be. And I remember very clearly while driving along the Portsmouth Road in Kingston-upon-Thames where I lived, and in an instance of asking God, he replied saying, Revelation. Well, to be perfectly frank, I wasn't that pleased with his answer as I was looking for something short and snappy. This was in the middle of the 1990s, remember, and TV sets were more square and the shape was not elongated, so revelation was not going to fit in. I would have preferred having only a few letters so the text would fill the screen and be large and bold enough for people to remember. No sooner, though, had I made my comments and the Lord spoke to me in a, in a very emphatic way, almost rebuking me, and said in a stern voice, Revelation. Well, from that moment on, I accepted the name and the series of programs were a great success and the name was established with the viewers. So when the time for Revelation came to be a TV channel, it was an obvious choice. Revelation TV. Revelation. Son, even though I have you in the media, I've given you the heart of an evangelist you are going to find out that the things that you touch are going to have an evangelistic edge and they're going to have an evangelistic anointing. Howard, Revelation TV is affectionately known as the Church Without Walls. Why? Well, the slogan Church Without Walls was given to the channel within the first few weeks of broadcasting. Uh, we have so many people, both believers and unbelievers, who watch the channel because they know that although we stand firm on what the Bible says, we're open to discuss the topics and beliefs uh, we have without discriminating or rejecting any reasonable comments or questions. In biblical times, folk met and talked at the city gates or in the marketplace, so people would come to seek guidance from the elders or simply listen to their discussions. Church should be a place where one can learn God's ways and a place of safety and security. You know, many people who could not or would not attend a local church can freely and easily tune in without feeling awkward or uncomfortable. They can receive God's word in a place where they would not normally be exposed to it. 
And more importantly, quite ordinary folk like myself can share God's word with everyday people in the comfort of their own home. Of course, we're not here to replace the local church, but to fill a much needed void in their lives of non-church goers and those who, for whatever reason, cannot or won't attend church. Your call to those places where you're going to see truth is going to bring confrontation. So what makes Revelation TV distinct from other Christian channels? The Lord wanted us from day one to be live on air, that's for sure. And although I was very nervous, I was determined not to use auto cues or rely on pre-records. We were just to be ourselves and trust in God that just as we open our mouths, as the scriptures say, the Holy Spirit will fill it. That's the big difference, being transparent, honest and vulnerable, live and real. Our goal, though, is to reach people on their level. So much of Christianity is one man speaking down from a pulpit and usually shouting. We come with a different approach. We know that people have questions and need honest answers. So we try to keep our programs live with emails, texts and, where possible, open the phone lines. We hold debates where we encourage dialogue between opposing viewpoints, question and answer shows uh, where other well-known ministers can respond to viewers' emails as well, and of course, regular live Bible studies. We welcome opinions that differ from ours with the hope that we can both challenge others and be challenged in our own faith. This live audience participation is a unique approach, especially on Christian television. And in a fast-moving world where events and breaking news occur moment by moment, it allows us to be there live on air to encourage, to pray for people and to prepare them for living in these critical times. Hi, Peter and Christine. So good to see you on live Revelation TV. See that word, live? You have questions and you want answers. Welcome to the Q&A show. Hello and welcome to another night of Bible study. And, and Cynthia, uh, Cynthia, you tell me how old you are. I hope that's all right for me to say. Hi there, good morning and welcome to our mornings. It was great to speak to so many of you on the phone last night. The Christian church really is that the fact that we can be united and one way to do that is through the media. Christian television has a reputation of always asking for money. How do you balance for books? Well, we take it seriously. We see it as our responsibility not to cause any of God's children to stumble. And thus the TV station has decidedly a different approach to finances than others. There are no long appeals for money such as financial marathons, no begging, no cajoling, no manipulation of God's word for financial gain. No. We simply state our needs and allow God to work on the hearts of believers. And what about other styles of programmes that are broadcast on the channel? Apart from our flagship programmes like Our Mornings, Q&A, Late Show, Middle East Report and The Bible Study, um, I believe that one thing that we should be doing more of and that's lacking in Christian television is a need for good biblically based documentaries. The likes of what you would see if you were switching on the history or geographic channels. Ours would be informative, educational, inspiring and based on the Bible of course and produced to the highest of standards. Over the years we have produced award-winning documentaries. We believe that these programs have helped to open the eyes to the reality of the Bible and to encourage people in their faith and their walk with God. And with the necessary funding, we believe that this can help change the face of Christian television. Today I believe 100% from the Bible and 100% from science. The creation is true, occurred 6,000 years ago, exactly as the Bible says. In 1939, Britain published a white paper declaring that Israel would be limited to an immigration total of only 35,000 Jews per year. Here in the heart of Andalusia, Spain, surrounded by a beautiful countryside, stands Cordoba.
But our first and foremost endeavour is to be disciples of Jesus Christ. I've made you a man of great vision and the ability to imagine, and that's how the creative abilities flow that I've put within the midst of you. And we now want to reach as many other dear souls as possible with the gospel message before the Lord returns. Sincerely, now is the time for Revelation TV. And the Spirit of the Lord says, Son, I have not limited you geographically. I've put a calling on your life to affect the world. And son, don't narrow it down or try to figure it out. But the Spirit of the Lord says, recognize I open doors that no man can shut. And the Lord says, son, I will hold open the doors until that which I have promised has come to pass.